We're back for another episode of Leaf Level Insights and Data Driven Solutions from the information given to us by Tyrannus Drone Scouting. Now, if you haven't seen episodes one and episodes two, well, go back, watch those. They're kind of important for context before you come back to this video. Don't worry, we'll still be here when you get back. Got any threes? Ha, go fish. Oh, crap, they're back. Hey, I'm Tyler Tobald. Hey, I'm Trevor Cox. Welcome back to JTAC Farms. Today marks episode three, where we're gonna talk all things weeds, insects, nutrient deficiencies, and disease pressure. Flight three is a treasure trove of data and is possibly one of my absolute favorites because it's really telling you what you're doing right and what you need to improve on. So today, we're gonna to start out here on West Files. However, we're not gonna be here long because there's not a whole lot to see. This field is actually looking fantastic. Now, there's a question to be asked here, Trevor, if there's nothing to see on the Drone Scout report, wasn't this just a wasted flight? Now, I get that question a lot from guys. They'll come out here and they'll see on Tyrannus, there's nothing showing, there's no problems, there's no issues, what am I paying for this for? there's a lot of value in knowing that nothing's wrong. I mean, now you know you don't have any issues, you don't have to spend any money. That's a good thing. That's a validation that everything is going as planned. There's a lot of value in that. Now we're up here on the file hill. There's a little bit more to talk about here. We're seeing some different activity. We've got some weed pressure. We've got some insect pressure, some chewing damage. And we might have a little bit of nutrient deficiencies, a little bit of sulfur that we're missing. And also, looks like there's a little couple of things of disease out here that we might want to take a look at too. Now the flight on this field was on June 8th. So it's been a little bit. And we've actually gotten some rain since then, which has, well, made it a bit tough to get into the field. It's a good problem to have around here. However, you'll see, yeah, we've got some weed pressure out here. And now, you know, this many days later, it's about time to get these things taken care of. We've got our wild buckwheat. We've got our bull nettles. We've got shatter cane. And a volunteer gourd from the cover crop. And of course, the crowd favorite, palmer amaranth, or pigweed. We've now got some decent weather ahead. The biggest issue is it's supposed to get pretty dang hot and the wind's really been kicking up lately. So hopefully they can get out here soon, get this posted and get it good and clean for the corn canopies. And at that point, more or less, we should be good for the rest of the season with the exception of some late season shatter cane. But there's something else we're gonna have to put into our post herbicide mix. And that is something to take care of our insect damage. If you look through the field here, there's some chewing damage. Our little guy, the grasshopper. So yeah, we've been seeing a lot of grasshopper damage this year. It just seems to be a good year for grasshoppers. Why? Who knows? But they've been pretty prevalent this year. Uh, the threshold kind of depends on the time of year. So if that corn is early, it's going to be actually a little bit higher of a threshold if you've got maybe 20 or so per yard that you're seeing, which is almost impossible to count. Just as you're walking along, you can get a pretty good feel for it if you're at that threshold or not. Once you get further along in the season, closer to pollination time, tasseling, that number actually reduces to about five or so just because they can do more damage on the silks, that kind of stuff. So where this is not early corn by any means, but it's progressing very fastly, I'd say we're, we're at the threshold to spray here. It's probably 10 or so if I had to guess per yard. So yeah, here's some of the damage. Um, I mean, this is pretty typical for grasshoppers will do. Right now, this isn't going to pose any issue to the yield as long as we get them taken care of. It's, there's not a ton of damage out here yet. These are really just now starting to move into the corn. So um, it's perfect time to get them sprayed, really. Next thing on the list that we need to take a look at, a little bit of disease pressure. Looking at some downy mildew, which typically that's in like wet areas, which um, we're not. So 
I don't know if that's a good problem to have or not for us. I'll let someone who knows more about it talk about that. So yeah, here's one of the leaves with that downy mildew and just that heavy striping. It is a fungal disease. It's not one that we really fight too much, and it's not a big yield impactor. Um, some people call it crazy top late in the season when it starts to tassel. That the top of that plant just kind of goes crazy, it leaps out, and it just kind of goes pop, hence the name crazy top. So I mean, that plant will not produce corn nearly like its neighbors will but it's not one that persists a lot in fields. Like Tyler said, it's in wet areas. We haven't been that wet. This is the only plant that we've seen out here, but Tyrannus did pick it up and found it. So it's present, but not going to hurt the yield at all. Well, we've talked weeds. We've talked insects. We've talked disease pressure. Now we're going to talk nutrient deficiencies. Sulfur, to be exact. One of the things that I just love about the Tyrannus, especially their mobile app, is that I can go out in the field like this. This is a screenshot from today from my mobile app, that little blue dot. That's me walking through the field to the exact spot and actually finding the exact plant that is showing signs of sulfur deficiency. So not a crazy amount of sulfur deficiency here, but you can see those yellow stripes in the leaves in this, in this region of the field. Um, like I said, that's not that bad. It's present and it picked it up with Tyrannus, but it's not to a point where it's going to justify us coming out here and spreading sulfur on 10 acres of the field. It'll, it'll probably grow out of this, to tell you the truth, because this field did get sulfur applied this spring. It's grown so fast right now is probably why it's showing some of this. So I think it will either grow out of this, but it's, it's not posing a threat the way that we're seeing it right now. Flight three is one of my favorites just because there's so much data to be gleaned from this. Now it's not just stand and weeds. Now we're talking about, you know, did your nutrient program before you planted, did it work out the way you wanted it to? Do you need to get after those weeds? Did you get a good termination of those weeds on an earlier post? You know, do you have some disease issues that you're going to need to keep watching for throughout the season? You know, everything is all compiled just neatly in a little package without bias and without opinion. All this stuff that we were looking at allows Trevor and I to have an apples to apples conversation because we're both seeing the same thing. We are looking at the same pictures. I can tell him, hey, I'm looking at this picture with this number on the bottom of it. And he can look up that exact one and we can have a good conversation about what this field needs or if it needs anything at all, which in this case, the sulfur, Minimal issues, should be fine. The bugs, yeah, we're gonna spike the post with a little bit of uh, hero, take care of the bugs out here. Things of that nature, we have that good conversation that allows us to better caretake every single acre out here. That wraps it up for flight three. Here before too long, flight four will be coming through here and it'll tell us a lot of the same information that we were looking at today. It'll be a kind of like a validation or a to-do list. You know, did we take care of our weeds? Did we take care of the pests? Are our nutrient deficiencies largely kind of working themselves out? Or are we going to have to apply something late season to address some more issues that we thought were okay? All that and more will be coming on the next episode. Hope to see you next time. And as always, thanks for stopping by.